Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Bobble Pod. And on this episode, we're calling it a Bobble Christmas Carol. And if you're expecting me to sing, I'm not, because I used to sing back in the day. I used to be part of the choir. Did you know that, Callum? I didn't know that. I was Oliver in Oliver Twist. Oh, wow. Yeah, very diverse and cultural back then, my school was. That was good. Yeah, great diversity. Um, It was only because I was the only kid in year seven that had a really good voice before my voice broke and puberty hit. Oh, <laughs> Basically, right. that's, that's, that's the reality of it. Um, but before we begin, as always, don't forget to like, follow, subscribe. If you're on YouTube, hello YouTube. Click on the bell notification button and do follow us. We've got some really good insight stuff that we do in Bubble Pod and we're really going to a fun direction. So to our regular listeners, welcome a Bubble Christmas Carol. Christmas is coming instead of winter is coming. And the last episode, if you tuned in, was talking about Black Friday digital marketing tips and what you could do. And that's when they say Christmas kind of really starts after that period. But I always say is, you know, when does Christmas really start for you, Callum? So it's usually, I would say, towards the back end of November. So once you've got Guy Fawkes night out of the way, bonfire night out of the way, is usually for me sort of, I, I start to look forward to it as as November sort of goes through. The question is, does it start in September? Because that's when supermarkets start putting out the initial, you know, festive elements and Christmas decorations and stuff. And if you go down the supermarkets now, and if you go into stores now, it's all Christmas decorations coming. Some people still doing a little bit of a Halloween, you know, it's elements. It's too early. It's, got, it's way too early. Is it after Black Friday then? It's got, I, I would say around around Black Friday, sort of middle to the end of November. That's when I start to build up to it. See, now, with me, Christmas starts when I see the Coca-Cola holidays are coming up there. <laughs> Until I see that, I'm not, I'm not, I don't care about Christmas. And I could, it, I could not see it for like a whole week before Christmas and I still won't be in the Christmas mood until I see the Coca-Cola advert. And I can't, and it's not, and it's, I'm not cheating here where I go on social media and do it. I mean, it naturally pops up as an advert whilst I'm watching TV mm. or if I'm out and about or, you know, it's on social media and comes up or it's on YouTube as a pre roll. Once I see that, I'm like, yes, I can get in the holiday mode because holidays are coming. Or you hear it on the radio, you know. Yes, that. yes. As long as I hear, see that advert, but it's a paid advert, then I'm in the Christmas mood. Some people say it's when John Lewis do their Christmas advert. That's when Christmas is coming because it's become synonymous now with Christmas. Working in radio, it's sometimes when you you get the odd one Christmas track an hour and that's like usually the end of November, beginning of December. You have that sort of build up yeah. towards the playlist going more, Shaky Stevens and, and things like that. So... It, it, that, it, a little bit of a temptation for me is to go, oh, it's Christmas now because we've got, you know, Merry Christmas, everyone. But you see how brands like Coca-Cola are synonymous with that Christmas mm. or John Lewis and how they've done that. Even Aldi, how they take the mick out of John Lewis's <laughs> campaign and do their own thing. It's actually quite funny. And remember, Santa used to be green in terms of his overalls. It's only because Coca-Cola was red and they made Santa red that, Santa is now red. He used to be green, never used to be uh, red. Um, I believe that is true. Um, And yeah, so Santa Claus never was red. It's only red because of Coca-Cola. Yeah. And it's that's really the only reason why Santa Claus is red. Otherwise, he used to be green. So it just shows the power of a brand around a season almond and owning that brand. Uh, and they've done some great stuff, Coca-Cola in terms of, you know, Christmas, but that big red truck with the big Santa on with the Coca-Cola that festive drink and then the, and the drinks and the bottles and everything is mad. So for me, it's when it's after Black Friday, um, Thanksgiving, you know, end of November, when the Christmas tree goes up as well, I think when the Christmas oh, yeah. tree goes up first of uh, December, but in my house, I think for two years running now, because I'll be in Dubai, which sounds so like, oh my God, like how, how horrible <laughs> he's in Dubai. They put the tree up and it'll be the second year they'll put the tree up without me. So I'll be upset about that. Um, so, right. We all know what it works when it starts for you, Callum, but I've got some data and stats I want to read out. 
um, around Christmas and what we're expecting this year. The episode before we talked about Black Friday, this episode is a bit different because people will do a lot of their Christmas seasonal shopping around that time, but there's uh, they won't buy everything then because of the cost of living crisis and everyone will have all the money and, you know, disposable income to get everything they want for Christmas. And some people will be cutting back. And and this is revealed by IPA. And I'm just going to read through this. Is um, Faced with the news that up to two-thirds of consumers are set to cut back on their Christmas spending this year due to ongoing cost of living crisis, that basically marketers and brands have a tough couple of months ahead of them. So this episode comes out on the 14th, is a whole six weeks before Christmas. And you've got to start thinking of, you know, tactics that you're going to have to spend more, but you might not see the same results as last year. So the data by a, a report commissioned by the IPA um, showed that while shoppers will be cutting back on their purchase year, they still want to see brands embracing the festive season. So that's like Coca-Cola not doing any Coca-Cola adverts or John Lewis not doing a John Lewis Christmas advert, essentially. It's like they want to see, like everyone's doing Halloween kind of festive ads now, they're going to be doing Black Friday or, you know, festive ads, and then they want to see the Christmas stuff. Even though we're in a tough economical environment, debatable, I know that's just a, a comment, that's just a, you know, elements is debatable, but I'm going based on the report commissioned by the IPAs that shoppers are will be cutting back on their purchases this year. Um, they still want to see brands embracing the festive season with the communication. So more than a third are looking for an injection of festivity, so around about 37%. Um, 21% want humor. 20% wants nostalgia. I guess I fall into 20% with nostalgia in terms of like wanting to see, you know, the Coca-Cola advert and get into the Christmas spirit of things. Um, I talked, when we talk about humor, I mentioned this in the previous podcast about Black Friday and how you could use humor and memes to kind of get traction. Because remember, this time you're competing for the same audience at, you know, similar times when they're on social media. Prices are inflated in terms of media spend, um, but customers won't be buying as much based on what this report's saying. And 20% focus on value. So, All important considerations, festivity, 37%, humor, 21%, nostalgia, 20%, and value, 20%. So that's what the key trends came out from their report. Most surprisingly, perhaps, was finding that nearly half, 46% of consumers want to see Christmas advertising that reminds them of better times. I'm not surprised. It has been a tough year. It has been a tough couple of years, really. I think this decade in particular has been a tough one turn of the year 2020 you know with the pandemic moving on to everyone being at home to christmas at home not with family and friends and 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 loved ones lost 2021 was a real resurge people getting back into the swing of things um spending more growth was rife in 2021 you know great sales uh, an embracement of a different kind of hybrid style living and working etc in terms of purchase behaviors and patterns 2022 is where things decided to decline and i blame a lot of that down to the government um for more details see other episodes as i say um but inflation you know other elements around the world out of our control that increase energy costs everything so it's not surprising that nearly half of consumers want to see christmas advertising that reminds them of better times and why not only with positivity can you move forward if you let negativity creep in you just end up being more negative having a positive outlook and mindset of things is the best way you can't be running a business and let the negativity get to you because then you panic and you make rush decisions and it always leads to a worse performance if you go with it with an open positive mind as hard as that is to do and easier to say think be strategic take your time have a bit of patience at this time of year. I believe that a lot of the spend will be done Black Friday, as per the previous podcast. I think that's when a lot of Christmas um, um, seasonal advertising and e-commerce brands will really benefit. But I think it will tail off between that whole Christmas period. But what can you do to prepare for that? What's the answer? It's all good saying, well, you know, I'm going to refer to myself as Mr. Bobble now. Um, is that right, Mr. Bobble? You're telling us, right, 
customers are going to be spending less, say in two thirds of them are going to be cutting back on their costs. They still want to see us advertise, but we know if we advertise, two thirds of customers are potentially less likely to convert. So are we just wasting money? Do we not advertise? Well, yes, you do because you focus on the brand and the long term. I mentioned this before. Prioritize your existing customers, your loyal customers. Give them incentives. Make sure you still make the revenue from your existing customers as you did last year, but try and improve on it if you can. We have a strategy in place, um, some of you might have seen as part of our PR, is we have brought on Cartwright and Butler. We actually had a conversation with them um, last year uh, around Christmas time. We did a lot of forecasting and planning and we, they onboarded with us in, in May this year. And we got them through summer with improved results, with lower spend, because obviously it's all about maximizing the performance of what they did as well as pushing on the brand. But they've set us really, really tough targets in terms of revenue targets. And one of them in December is a million pounds in revenue that we've got to achieve through the website. So that's just online sales. Now, what we've done internally and what our client loves about this is we sat down and said, right, it's September. And we did this a couple of months ago. And we're like, right, we've got all our clients. It's September. We want to make sure we spend is going to increase. How do you do it gradually to support everything? How do we do it? So we came up with an internal campaign called a road to 1 million. So the road to 1 million is that 1 million pound target revenue for December. So we know it's going to be difficult, but we're trying to do as much as we can to hit the total month by month revenue targets, but be ahead. So even if we're slightly lower, we can show that with the data and insights that we have that actually some of that revenue is going to probably come in November as opposed to December. So it's a road to a million in revenue in total, but in that month, but we don't want to distract from hitting our target. That is our goal. That's what we're still going to try to achieve. But there's subtle sort of sub-strategies within there in terms of what we do. But I had a PPC, I paid me the manager. We, we sat down and we said, what can we do? Why? Right, what do we do? Well, let's create a road to a million. The idea came from Lewis and Shaheen and the team. They've both been incentivized as well working on that account in terms of if they do hit that. So it's not just in terms of bonus or the wage in terms of what they achieve as, as clients. And, and this is something you could do with your own staff, whether you're, if you have an in-house team or you have an agency, incentivize them maybe a little. But realistically, your agency like us should be coming up with these ideas first. So road to a million, that's what we've put in place for Christmas. Now, if Lewis does it, I know for a fact that he wants this really nice gaming chair, which is going to be like five, 600 quid. So that's his incentive. If you do that, I will get you that. For all the extra time and service report you want, that's something you're saving up to buy yourself. We'll get it for you. And I've given the head of PPC a similar kind of budget to go out and pick something for herself or her kid that she wants to do as well. So we, you've got to, and if you're, if you're an e, big e-commerce brand and you've got an internal marketing team, you know, come up with some ideas, come up with challenges, incentives to get people through to those targets. It keeps your staff motivated because it is going to be a difficult time. It helps you identify doing more. It keeps them going because I always say happy staff, happy clients. Simple as. Um, so our staff are all geared up for seasonal with everything that we're doing. We know it because we've got different campaigns, different internals. Now, this isn't a campaign or strategy we developed with the agency. This is something we developed internally based on the targets, um, sorry, our client has set, set, set us. So as an agency, we haven't been set this, you know, campaign. Like this is our road to a million in terms of that's what the client hasn't come up to us that. We did that internally. We created the incentives internally because we want to deliver on that. So we've been planning way in advance. I always say, if you're listening to this on the 14th of November, which is when this episode comes out, and you haven't done any planning for Christmas, you're way too late. I always stress this fact that you should start your Christmas advertising planning and strategy back in August when it's quiet. Everyone goes on holiday, but that's the perfect time to plan for the next four months. August is the quietest period for mark digital marketing. Yeah, we know that statistically. It was dead in August. Most of our staff were on holiday, and we're happy for them to be on holiday because we'd rather them take their time and stuff. But that's when the strategic planning and started should come. Look at supermarkets. They already start putting in some seasonal activity and products uh, into their short stores straight after when kids go back to school in September. So starting a little early isn't a bad thing with your planning. So what you should be doing now as and you're listening to this and your company or your client or your, it doesn't matter who you are, if you work in my department, is 
get your calendar out and start planning ahead. You know, start planning. So as soon as, you know, Christmas comes to an end, January, we're already finalizing and implementing the Easter campaign strategies. We're already talking about Valentine's Day with some clients. And like Valentine's, we haven't got through Black Friday yet. We haven't gone through Christmas. Yes, but you have to plan ahead for bigger clients and bigger, you know, e-commerce brands. Don't forget there's Mother's Day coming up. You know, there's football and there's so many things that we've got alcohol brands, you know, which is gift options. There's so many things that happen throughout the year. You know, we've got the rugby going on right now. We've got the world, the Cricket World Cup going on right now. Well, actually, the rugby's just finished, so congratulations, South Africa. But, you know, we've got so much going on in terms of sporting events that are going to continue to happen throughout the whole year. Other kind of events and activities happen throughout the years. Euros next year. So with that brand, we're already thinking, what can we do for Euros and a build-up to the Euros? You have to plan ahead. So similar to the format of the last episode, I'm going to give you some ideas of what you can do to prepare. Very simple thing. So Christmas is always a great time to launch new products. So that's the first thing you can do is focus on some new hero, new product launches. Amazon did this perfectly with the Kindle. It became the go-to product that everyone bought around Christmas around that time because that's what they focused on. They brought a new cheap alternative to buying books and service and they did tremendously well from it. I'm not saying you have to reinvent the book with a Kindle. I'm saying if you have new products, now's a good time to start launching them and getting them out there because people will be in that purchase mind. They're, they're in the buy behavior mind. Optimize your pages and landing pages for search engines. You should have started this ages ago because SEO takes a longer time to implement and for your rankings to, or your pages to be indexed well by Google. And when I'm talking about optimizing search engines, it's like, you know, Christmas gifts for him, Christmas gifts for her. Christmas gifts for new ones, whatever it is, or, you know, um, personalized gift ideas, Christmas gift ideas, these kind of search terms that are seasonal, you should be optimizing for all year round anyway, but should be optimizing for well in advance for Christmas. You need to merchandise the shop front of your store or website if you're B2B with gift guides. So if you are similar to like optimized for search engines, you should be doing stuff like, you know, gifts for him, gifts for her as the main mega menu, you know, make, you know, the big like homepage banner elements, your key gift ideas, personalization should be on there in terms of like, you know, your shop front gift ideas, give them gift ideas. Customers are searching for ideas of what to buy for their partners, for their family, for their kids, for their loved ones, for friends, secret Santa, stuff like that. Even for themselves, give them get give gift guides, you know, make sure your e-commerce stores are optimized for that at the first thing that they see. Offer personalized gifts if you can. Now, that's a lot more difficult, but you can do personalization, not just in terms of personalizing gifts like chocolate, and name on a chocolate bar or elements like that, but you could offer like a personalized card or you could offer like a personalized note, something like that, or personalized gift wrapping, something where they can do something kind of personalized where it can be delivered and pre-wrapped, something that gives a sense of personalization as a gift. You know, these things like this work really, really well around seasonal and gifting. They, they work all year round anyway, around birthdays, anniversaries and stuff like that. But around Christmas it works really, really well. Create bundles to give more for less. This is how you're going to increase your average order value on your website is pushing out your core bundles. If you have a really incentivized or really good bundle, a good value in terms of what they're getting in terms of all these items for a certain price, and you're pushing that out through video advertising, social media, Google, whatever it is, um, you're going to get more quality traffic to the website and then it's on you to capture that data and retarget and optimize and you know get from basket to basket conversion on your website. But you know, bundles that give more for less work really, really well because then customers are getting value. And we talked about this, 20% of customers this year are going to focus on value. So you need to be offering value in terms of what you're doing. And these are like personalized gifts and stuff, remember? An injection of festivity to your website in terms of personalized gift wrapping and Christmas wrapping and stuff like that. You know, you need to tailor to what the reports and what these what, what the industry is telling you, what experts are telling you to do. Other things you do is offer exclusive and secret products for customers that are loyal, that are long-standing customers. I always I said this in the Black Friday podcast, and it a couple of these overlap. But Offer exclusive secret products or offers just for loyal customers, existing customers, brand advocates. 
simple as. They're the ones that are going to be the heroes. They're going to be your cash cows of your brand, your e-commerce stores. You know, reward their loyalty and actually do it with with customized elements. And the cost-effective way is if you're not leveraging your data through CRM systems or doing email campaigns, then you're already behind. You know, we need to, you need to be using email campaigns to follow up with people that are abandoning baskets. You need to be doing email campaigns to tell people about these bundles, about these special offers or unique offers, about the gift ideas that you have on your storefront. You know, all new product launches, email is a great way to communicate that. And people do tend to look at their emails a lot more around for offers around this time of year as well. And it costs you nothing. So be prepared, have some creative elements done. I mean, I'm telling you to do email and we don't even do email advertising as an agency in terms of the service we offer. It's good. It's, you know, effective. It's something you should be focusing on. But the, oh, for the main thing you can do is be creative. A, B test, stand out. Everybody's going to be spending money on advertising. Everyone's going to have, you know, offers. Everyone's going to have festivity around their ads. You've got to try and find unique ways that personalizes your brand to the content and to your customers that you're trying to reach out to. So think about, you know, A-B testing different headlines, uh, descriptions, A-B testing different um, videos or images for particular Products, so you've got a new product launch, have two variations of ads. A, B, test, have one that's more festive focus or Christmas focus, have one that's a bit more out there, a bit more creative, you know, that might, you know, might be not a, a non-conventional, more quirky way you might do things. Someone actually sent um, to me uh, an image of a recruiter on LinkedIn around Halloween and um, I'll actually get my... I'll get my phone out and I'll actually show this because it was only sent to me a, a, a couple of days ago and it was a recruiter reaching out to them and this is just like an example of how you can stand out. I won't say the person's name, but it was like, I hope you have a fantastic Monday so far and 2023 has been a, what they call a spectacular year for you. So they were adding in like those kind of words and stuff into it and reaching out saying like on a less ghostly note, if you're itching for a swap or crypt for your job, you know, now's the time to do it kind of thing. They're the ways that you can be very, very creative in terms of, you know, adding a little, little things and AB tests. It might work, it might not work, but there's no harm in trying and doing that. Hopefully this episode has been useful. Christmas is coming, you know, have a great time. Let's get into the festive spirit. There's a lot of stats and information there. Don't forget to like, follow, subscribe. If, you know, you've got any questions or want to follow up with, use our at handles at Bobble Digital. Use the hashtags Mr. Bobble, Ask Bobble and Bobble Pod. And we look forward to catching up with you with some guests on our next few episodes before the end of the year. Thank you very much. Bye.